Hey guys, welcome to Tech Notebook, and this video is the second tutorial in the Django Zoom Link Organizer tutorial series. So in this video, we will be setting up the development environment. So let's get started. Okay, so now the first thing you will need to do is to open up Visual Studio Code or any other text editor that you will be using for this tutorial and you will need to open up a blank folder in this IDE. So once you've done that, you will need to navigate to that folder in the terminal, like I've done here. And in the terminal, you will just need to type in pip install virtual env and hit enter. And virtual env is a tool to create virtual environments, which is basically like a container for your code. So that way any packages that we install inside this virtual container will not go into the main Python installation for this computer. So for me, it says that the requirement is already satisfied. So now let's go on to the next step. So now that we are inside our desired folder, we will just need to type in virtual env, so virtual env, space env and hit enter and now it is actually creating the virtual environment so let's just wait for this to complete so now if we go into the file manager of vs code we can see that there is an env folder in, inside of our files folder which contains a bunch of folders so all these folders will contain the Python installation, and other things that we will need. So now once we've done that, we will need to go back into the terminal and we will need to type in cd env, hit enter, and now we are in the env directory. And now once we're in the env directory, what we'll need to type in is scripts uh, backslash activate like I have right here, and you will just need to hit enter. And now if we look at the start of this next terminal line, we see that there is env in parentheses. So whenever you see this env in parentheses, that means that the virtual environment is activated. And we saw how to activate it, and that's by doing this command. And if you want to deactivate the virtual environment, all you need to do is type in deactivate, like this. And we see that this env is no longer on this next line. Let's activate it again. And now we are in the virtual environment. So now we will need to install Django. And the way we do that is by typing in pip install Django. Like that. And you will need to hit enter. And as you can see, it has installed Django. So now we will need to go into this env folder up here and we will need to create a new folder inside env and we will call this folder src and we will hit enter and this will store all the code for our meeting link organizer. So now we will need to go in and navigate to that directory and the way we do that is just by typing in cd src hit enter and now we are in the src directory as you can see right there and now we see that this src directory is empty. So right now, once we are inside the src directory, we will actually need to create our Django project. And the way we do that is by typing in Django-admin start project. And we will need to enter in the name of our project. So. I'm just going to call this meeting link and we will need to hit enter. So now if you look inside the SRC folder, we see that there is a meeting link folder inside that and then there's another meeting link in here. So let's actually delete this folder, the meeting link, because there is a more elegant solution. So we don't want there to be two meeting link folders inside SRC. So what we need to do is at the end of this 
Django admin start project meeting link. We'll just need to type in a space and a dot. So if we do this, what it will do is it will only have one meeting link folder and the manage.py file in SRC, and it will not create the second meeting link folder that houses all of that. So if we hit enter, you'll see what I mean. So if we go into SRC, we see that there is no uh, meeting link folder that's housing both of these. It's just SRC and then meeting. So now what we need to do is we need to start an app within this project. So basically how Django works is that there's a main project and inside that project there are multiple apps. So usually a developer would create different apps for different purposes, but our app is only to store and present the meeting links to the user, so we, we won't need to use multiple apps. So the only app we need to create is the interface app. So the way we do that is by typing in python manage.py start app and we'll call this app interface and hit enter. And if we look in here, we see that there is a new folder that got created called interface. So inside this interface folder, we can house the code for the front end interface like the HTML. And we can also store some of the models that we will use to actually store the meeting links. So now that we've created our interface app, we just need to check if our Django installation actually worked. And the way we do that is by typing in python manage.py run server and just hit enter. And this will actually start our Django server. So if we were to go to this link right here, alt and click, we see that it takes us to 127.0.0.1 for 8,000. And it takes us to this landing page that says the install worked successfully. Congratulations. So you may be wondering if there is an easier way to actually access this website instead of typing a 127.0.0.1. And the easiest way to do it is just by typing in localhost or 8,000. That's all we need to do. So 127.0.0.1 is the same thing as localhost. And that will just take you to the exact same website. Okay, so now we can go back into VS Code. And once we are in VS Code, we need to go into our meeting link, the main project, and we will need to go into settings.py. So when you create a new application in Django, we will need to actually add that to the installed app section of the settings. So this is basically a list. So we just need to add another string in this list and we will need to add in the name of the project of the app that we just added. In this case, it would be interface. And that's all we need to do. So now we have added that to the installed apps and that's all we need for this tutorial. Okay, so if you were able to follow all these steps without an issue, you've successfully completed this tutorial. Make sure to leave any questions that you may have in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.